Hey everyone, I'm really excited about this video because I'm gonna show you how to take advantage of the new emphasis animations inside of Articulate Storyline 360. And the reason why I'm excited about this is because I've been creating several videos of how to take advantage of this through JavaScript and how to add on additional customizations and, and go beyond what's available out of the box. And now Articulate Storyline, I don't know if they've been watching those videos or they've been aware of this, but they've been adding on a lot more customization abilities, especially in the animation section and the emphasis animation that basically takes advantage of the same framework that I was talking about before. Now, the framework that I'm talking about is a framework that's already integrated inside of Articulate Storyline 360, and this is the GSAP framework. It's an animation framework that allows you to animate your different objects on the web. And so this is already part of Storyline. And so what they're doing in Storyline is they're adding on or giving you control over these abilities and they're adding different things like teeter and shake and grow and shrink and other things like that that you can do inside of this animation framework. So that's why I'm really excited is because they're making it easier. You don't have to add on all that JavaScript code that I showed you before. You still can, and in certain situations, it still does give you more control, but it at least allows you, for now, it allows you to go in and uh, add on simple ones. So I wanna walk you through this feature, but I also wanna walk you through how to customize it. I'm all about customization, taking things to the next level, and so I'm gonna show you how to export it out and customize it, and even though there's not a lot of control inside of Storyline, you can get more control over uh, your animations once you export it out. So let's go ahead and dive right into Storyline. And I have a simple tab interaction. This tab interaction allows the learner to click on these different options, they'll see the different layers, and then it will come back here once they've clicked on that layer. So what I wanna do is call out that these are clickable. They probably notice with the hands that they can click on it, but I wanna add just a little bit more polish to it and I want to say, hey, this uh, make it wiggle a little bit after a couple of seconds if they haven't clicked on it. That's where I can come into my emphasis animations. So you can see right here, just by selecting on this object, I can now go in, if you go into the animations tab, I can now go into my emphasis animations and select this drop-down box. And I have five different types of emphasis animations. The first one is pulse, and this is kind of like a heartbeat. It'll start to beat a little bit like a heart. Uh, the next one is a grow. The next one is shrink. So grow will just make it larger, shrink will make it smaller. You can even combine those where you have it grow and then you have it shrink. You have it grow or you have it shrink. Or you could have it grow and then grow and grow and grow until eventually it gets to a certain point where it explodes or something like that. Um, and so those are different types of animations that you can have, or even shrink, it's gonna go smaller and smaller until it's no longer clickable. So a lot of different options, and this is where I think it opens up a whole world of possibilities is by the different uh, emphasis animations that we can add. These are not animations to bring objects in, these are not object or animations to bring objects out. Those are in the entrance and exit animations. These are once the objects are on the stage, you want to draw attention to these objects, hence the emphasis. And so I'm just gonna go in and do a simple one teeter. I want it to wiggle a little bit. It adds on a trigger to my timeline or to my objects over here. So you can see right here, option A, which is the name of my object here. And you can see right here, emphasize option A using teeter. And I could swap that if I wanted to or add more. And then when the user clicks on option A, now, this means that they have to click on it in order for it to wiggle, but we have a problem because it's gonna show the layer. And when I show the layer, I don't, it's gonna hide it, so it's not gonna really see the wiggle. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm going to adjust this. Instead of the when the user clicks, I'm gonna actually have this when the timeline reaches. So I can use the timeline as kind of the indicator of when that happens. And I talk about this a lot with triggers. The most key part of a trigger is the when section. And in fact, I'm gonna pull this up and I'm gonna double click on this. There's really the three parts of a trigger. There's the action of what happens, there is the when section, and then the conditional. And the when section allows you to take advantage of 
a lot more functionality than what we usually do out of the box. We usually just stick with the click. But now I can trigger something along the timeline when it reaches two seconds. Or if I had a cue point on the timeline, when it reaches a certain cue point, I can then trigger something. Or when two objects collide, or there's a lot of different options here. So my, my point is just explore the when section and the different types of events that can happen and how you can add triggers to those events. All right, so now I am in this section and I'm gonna switch the seconds to be two seconds. I want this little teeter to happen after two seconds. Now, if I preview this, you'll see that the teeter will start to happen here. So you see it's gonna wiggle, but it's gonna wiggle very little. It starts to rotate and the rotate right now for the low is about four degrees. And I'll show you how I know that, but let's go into the options here and on any entrance animation. So I'm gonna select this object right here, select the animation, and you can see that I can adjust the duration, which right now is 0.75 seconds. I can adjust that to be something else, but it's set to medium. I want this to really wiggle, so I'm gonna go ahead and adjust that to high. And then I can even adjust this if I want it to be more on the left or more on the right, I can go ahead and adjust that as well. But I'm gonna keep it at high, and then I'm gonna go ahead and preview that and see what happens. So depending on the emphasis animation, different things will change. So you can see after two seconds, it wiggles a little bit more. I could even get it to be more, but we're gonna talk about that in a second. I'm gonna go ahead and close out this preview. Now, when you're working with emphasis animations, you can have this emphasis animation happen at any point, but you can also have other emphasis animations happen at other points. So to add on other emphasis animations to this object, all I have to do is go ahead and select this drop-down box, and you can see that I'm already teetering, so I don't need to do that. But let's go ahead and have this pulse. And it adds a completely different trigger. Every time you add something else, it's gonna add a completely different trigger. And it's actually right here, so emphasis animation using pulse, and it's going to automatically default to the user clicks. And so I'm gonna go ahead and select this drop-down box and we're gonna have this do four seconds. So after it's done animating, it's probably gonna wait. So the animation is gonna take 0.75 seconds, so it'll happen after that. So let's go ahead and see what happens now. And you can start combining and having several of these, but you can see it's gonna teeter in two seconds and then in four seconds, it's gonna pulse. So I can start to have as many of these as I want to really emphasize the object. Well, I'm gonna come back into here and I'm gonna delete that pulse here. If I select that trigger, notice though, if I deleted the trigger here, and this is in beta, so hopefully this connects down the road, but if I select this, the pulse is still there. Even though the trigger is no longer there, it's still there, so I wanna delete that as well. Now, there's other types of animations I can add. Let's go ahead and explore some of those, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete that trigger, and when I deleted it up here, it did not delete it in the trigger. Again, this is beta, so uh, there's, there's some bugs here, but just keep that in mind. I'm gonna select this, and I'm gonna do a simple grow animation. So what happens when I grow? And we'll just keep it with the user clicks so I don't have to spend time adjusting that every time I wanna switch to something new. But I'm gonna go ahead and click on this, and you can see that it starts to expand. So that's the grow, it's just gonna basically grow. The shrink is going to shrink, so let's go ahead and Delete that, and we're going to adjust this to shrink and see what happens. Now I can have full control over how much it shrinks or how much it grows. Inside a storyline, it's just that low, medium, or high. So it doesn't really give us a lot, but I'll show you how to do that. I'm gonna click on that and you can see how it shrinks. Now this is where, especially if you're using the timeline where I can see something like, especially with a game, where you can have every five seconds a balloon starts to increase. And so five more seconds, it increases again. Five more seconds, it increases again. So you can have this kind of, um, this urgency. The learner has to do whatever activity or answer the questions before this balloon pops. And so you can have it uh, continue to grow. You can add on these emphasis animations. That's where I can see like grow or shrink be like the, the potential or shrink could be something like it's, you know, it's starting to shrink. The temperature is uh, going low. We have to do something about it. So that's where you can start to create these uh, gamification stuff. Let's go ahead and just switch this out and we're gonna stick with grow. 
because I wanna show you what you can do once you've actually published this out. And let's go ahead and keep it when the user clicks. So I'm gonna go back to my home tab and I'm gonna publish this out so I can actually control more about this. And we'll talk about that. So I'm gonna click on publish this to the web, publish it to my desktop, and then I'm going to check this on my desktop because I am using parallels. I can just move over here and I'm gonna minimize that. And I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. I use Visual Studio Code, so I just drag the folder in and you can see it already has my user JS up, but I'm gonna pull this back up just in case. And you can see right here, here is my code. And you go into the story underscore content and then you go into user.js. I'm gonna format this. I like the indentations to be a little bit better. But there is something called timeline in GSAP where we can start to sequence our animations. And uh, I've noticed that storyline uses that. So if I come into here, let's try to make sense of this. So the first thing is it starts to add different variables, which if you've done any type of JavaScript, you've looked through my videos on any type of JavaScript, you'll know that we have to reference get player, we have to set var, get bar, different things like that, which they're now including as part of the export. So this could make it a whole lot easier. I'm gonna explore that a little bit more down the road but this can make it a whole lot easier. It also adds a timeline. Now this is where the green sock comes into play and it adjusts some of the settings. And so we have the 750. Basically we have to type in milliseconds here and every thousand milliseconds is one second. So 0.75 seconds is actually 750 in milliseconds. So that's why you see that here. But if I wanted to adjust this to 2000, I could adjust that to 2000 and that would be two seconds. Now, I could also have ease in, ease out, which that's like the slowing down or the starting up of the animation, having it slow. If you wanted to get into that, I'm gonna create a video. And if you're interested in this video, let me know. I'm gonna create a video on how to customize this even more. What other things can we do to the code that's getting produced here to get even better animation? So I'll explore that in a future video. This ID is the object that's going to be affected. It's going to be that hand icon which this also identifying objects in JavaScript was a whole lot harder before, but this could make it a whole lot easier. So I'm gonna explore that more too. So you can see grow amount. This is where I can adjust how much of this will actually grow. The key is down here. It's gonna be 100%, so it's gonna actually end up being 1.2. And so it's gonna take its current, its current size is one, so it's gonna do 0.2, which is almost like 20% of its um, current size, and that's how it's going to grow. If it was going to shrink, you probably wouldn't see this, and you would see something like 0.8 or something like that. If I want to adjust this a little bit, I can come in here and say 0.4, and I can get a lot more control. In fact, I'm gonna save that. I'm gonna go into my story.html file. I'm gonna preview that, and I'm gonna see how this will actually get affected. So I'm gonna click on that and you can see it's grown even more. Well, let's go back into the user.js and let's do like drastic, let's do 0.8. And so now if I click on this, you can see it's, it's grown even more. So that's what I'm saying is you have full control, even though Storyline only has low, medium or high, go into the code, adjust some of these variables, you have full control over what's happening. The part that I'm going to explore is where, what else, what other types of things can I add to it to do even more? But at least what's out of the box, you can go in there and adjust the numbers and get it to and fine tune it exactly how you want. And that's the same thing with like the teeter. That's the same thing with like the, um, the shake. You can go in here and when you export it out, you can just find the numbers, adjust those numbers and get something very specific. So that's the emphasis animations and Storyline has been creating a lot of new updates or been doing a lot of new updates that have been enhancing JavaScript and um, emphasis animations. I like the route that they're going and I hope they continue and open up more developer customization, basically customization capabilities. So we can go in and we can get 
and it becomes more useful as a developer. So I hope they keep listening there. And if you like this video, head on over to my YouTube channel, click that like button, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell notification so you get notified of all future videos as they come out. That really helps my channel, allows me to continue to pr produce these videos for you so you're able to get the most out of your learning development tools. That's really my goal with this channel is to help you become the best learning developer with e-learning tools, XAPI, other things like that, which if you wanna see more, you can head on over to my website, learningdojo.ninja, see all my previous blog posts. You can also check out full courses and Articulate Storyline 360, Adobe Captivate, XAPI Fundamentals, Camtasia, Articulate Rise, Custom Score, and HTML5 video. That's all I have for you for today. But thanks, everyone, and I'll see you next time.